Hey, this is Nabar Getsy, and bringing you some of the best comics that you might not know yet, but you're about to get to know them. And don't worry, they're going to be on their best behavior. We shot this live in Nashville, Tennessee at Zany's. It's the Nate Land Showcase. Please welcome your host for tonight, the great Aaron Weber. Thank you all for being here. I was driving here getting pumped up. I was listening to Boston in the car. Do you guys know the band Boston? If you've never heard of Boston, here's all you need to know. There's a band called Boston. And I like the band Boston. You know who I think doesn't like them? Other bands from Boston. You ever think about that? Why did they get to take the name? Were they the first ever band in? Y'all aren't as fired up about this as I'd like you to be. I've been thinking about this all day. Why did these bands just get to claim huge swaths of land? You know, some bands do whole states, right? You know them, Alabama, Kansas, Florida Georgia Line. They're pushing it, I'd say. You don't get two whole states. America, remember the band? And you know what? They're not even from America. They're from London. Doesn't that make you mad? And they took all of the United States. Don't even get me started on Earth, Wind, and Fire, okay? These guys are out of control. I never know what to wear for this. I'm realizing now this is a lot of blue, and I'm sorry about that. And the stage is kind of blue, so this is, this is, I look like the kid from Willy Wonka up here, and I'm sorry about that. I never know what to wear. You know, I've been wearing a lot of, I gotta say, I do like one brand, Carhartt. Do you guys know Carhartt? I do like Carhartt for one reason. In a Carhartt, I am only an XL. That feels pretty good. I'm a 2XL in every other brand of clothing. But somebody at Carhartt was like, let's let them feel good. You know, let's, let's take an X off of there. We'll put loose fit and we'll make them think he's making progress. I have a closet full of XLs that I know are actually 2XLs. That is a crazy way to live. Just to lie to yourself every morning. That's like if I converted all my money to pesos. You know, and I was like, I'm a millionaire now. Yeah, no, nah, you're just fat. But whatever helps you sleep at night, you know. I would like to wear a hat. I do like wearing hats. I've been struggling lately. I got a huge head. I don't know if you can see it from where you are. I don't know how much this camera's zooming in, but I got a pretty big head. You're getting one angle of it, but it's a, you got to do a 360. To, it's pretty big, man. If I wear a snapback hat, I mean, it, I only snap one button, and it hangs on, dude. It struggles. It doesn't rest there. It's a tug of war all day. And I got to take it off when I eat, because if I chew too hard, it'll... And, <laughs> and that'll ruin a dinner party real quick, I'm telling you. If you're quietly eating and you just hear... They're like, what is that? Oh, I didn't hear anything, you know? If I wear a fitted hat, which is like you have a size, I wear a seven and seven eighths, which is pretty big. I got a nod of approval from that guy. It's pretty big, man. If you go to like a Lids at a mall, a seven and seven eighths is not the biggest size they have, but I'll tell you something, it's the second biggest. So it's pretty big, seven and seven eighths. Here's how big that is. There's a baseball player that even if you don't follow baseball, you've probably heard of him. His name is Barry Bonds, okay? He's probably the best baseball player of all time, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. Do y'all know why? Steroids, right? They say he used steroids. And one of the main pieces of evidence they used against Barry Bonds is that when he started shooting up, his whole body grew. His head ballooned to a seven and three fourths. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all know fractions? That's a size smaller than my head is right now. And I've never used steroids a day in my life. And I turn on ESPN and they're like, look how cartoonishly large this freak's head got. And I'm like, I think he looks good, dude. What are you? you look sleek, Barry, you know? I'm just not embarrassed by that stuff anymore. I'll just say stuff. I don't care. I'm old enough now. I'm afraid of heights. I'm terrified. My buddy, dumb friend, he said, I'm too old to be afraid of heights. I said, what should I do about it? He said, you need to go skydiving, okay? I looked into skydiving. Looks like fun. A uh, lot of places around Nashville here to go. Every place I found had a weight limit. It's like 230 pounds. Listen, I've lost some weight. I'm not far off. But I'm off. So this will have to be a fun goal one day. I'll lose enough weight to fall out of a plane without paying extra, you know? So 
I went back to my dumb friend. I said, I appreciate the suggestion. I can't go skydiving. There's a weight limit. And he goes, man, a weight limit for skydiving? Is that something to do with the parachutes? I was like, I didn't follow up with them, but I'm thinking that's a pretty big part of it. Yeah, man. Do you think they're just being mean to fat people at the plane store? The pilot's like, don't bring them up here on my plane. They're gonna fall too fast anyway. Just leave them all over. I looked into this. It's, curious. it's interesting to me. Some of y'all are not afraid of heights, and I am. So I saw a study about this online. I did not read the whole... Have you ever tried to look at a real study? It's like a hundred bucks. And this joke is not worth a hundred bucks to research that. So I, I saw the headline of this. I don't know. Some scientist claims that the toys you play with as a kid, that will play a role and how your fears develop as an adult. Now, I don't know if that's true. I also don't know what toys I played with as a child. So I called my mom. I said, random question, out of the blue. What kind of toys did I play with as a toddler? Anything height related? Like a plane or a helicopter or like a big ramp? And my mom goes, no. No, you mostly just uh, played with the spatula. Well, this is going to be a longer phone call than I thought. Um, <laughs> did you say the spatula? Do you mean like a toy spat? No, like mine from the kitchen. By the way, this is true. Every home video of me as a kid, I'm just sitting in the corner holding a spatula. My siblings are with a bop it. They're playing Monopoly. I'm holding a spatula. I was like, why did you not give me real toys? She was like, we tried. We lined up a ton of stuff. You chose the spatula. What, what did I even do with it? Just rubbed it. <laughs> Were you worried about this? We talked about it every night. Every night, your dad and I were like, we don't know what's going on with this kid. He, he may be like the Mozart of fry cooking. That's what we hope. But he is drawn to this thing. Next month, I will be officially married two years. It'll be my two-year wedding anniversary. Thank you. I've never worn jewelry before. I don't know the etiquette with the ring. Can you take it off ever? Like, what are the rules? No? <laughs> I mean for like a shower, okay? Not, not a weekend, you know what I mean? You can't take it off ever? I leave it on. I'm afraid of losing it. Some guys are different. Guys will take it off at night. If you guys, I do a lot of like welding and stuff like that, so I, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I barely know what welding is. but. <laughs> You're supposed to take it off. I was talking about this at a show. This guy came up to me afterwards. He goes, do you know what I do? I was like, no. I, I don't know who you are, but tell me about your marriage. He said, every night before I go to bed, I take my wedding ring off. And I, <laughs> he didn't sound like this at all. Just, just full disclosure, he sounded nothing like this. But he said, every night before I go to bed, I take my wedding ring off, I put it on the nightstand. That way, every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is I get to put it right back on so that every day I make a conscious decision to be married to my wife. I was like, that's beautiful. You know? That's also not how marriage works at all, buddy. I mean, what kind of paperwork did this guy sign? He's opting in every morning? That's not how I'm doing it. I thought the whole point was you were locked in like a Comcast contract. You know, you don't just decide every day. That's insane to me. My wife and I love each other, but if we had to wake up every day and agree to be married, we'd be married three days a week. That's what I think. Not at 8 a.m. Give me till noon. We'll take a half day and we'll, <laughs> we'll make up those hours later. I don't know. Here's something going on in my marriage right now. We have... I don't know what happened. We have one phone charger at the house. I'm telling you, at one point I had 300, just a cord coming out of every hole in the wall. And now we're down to just one six incher by her side of the bed, because that's where the outlet is, you know? And I could go get another one, you know? I can afford a $4 cord at the gas station. I just forget until every night we have to decide who deserves to wake up with a fully charged phone? And that argument gets intense. It's high stakes, you know? I'm like, hey, Lucy, can you plug my phone in real quick? I got a big day tomorrow. She was like, first of all, no, you don't. 
Second of all, no, I'm dying over here. I'm at 11%. And I was like, wow, 11%. Hate to one-up you, but I am cooking at 4% as we speak. She's like, tell you what, buddy, you already got a CPAP machine plugged in over here. How many outlets do you need to sleep tonight? You want me to get you a surge protector? Is that what we need? I was like, you keep talking like that. I won't put my ring on tomorrow morning, okay? That's all. Thank you guys so much for being here. You guys are a great audience. Let's keep that energy going throughout the show. I have no doubt that y'all will. Let me ask you a very important question, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to bring out your next comic tonight? Make some noise, y'all. This guy is a good friend of mine. He has a hilarious special out on YouTube right now, all the way from San Diego. Give it up for my buddy, Mal Hall. Keep it going for Aaron, everybody. Gosh, good to be here. You guys sound good. Are there parents out here on a Tuesday? Oh, yeah, shout out the parents. Shout out the parents. I shout out parents at the top of all of my shows now because I'm new to the fraternity. And, uh, and I love seeing parents out enjoying their free time. So on a school night, I don't know who has your kids. But live it up. However you feel tomorrow is for tomorrow you to worry about. Have fun on this Tuesday. Uh, if you don't have kids in here, I want to tell you to your face, you have no idea how much you disrespect your free time. <laughs> and that's why you don't get a shout out. Shout out to these parents enjoying their lives. I have two kids at home. My son is three. My daughter turned one last week, Tuesday. So that's what I got of the house set complete. Uh, I'm a millennial parent, which means I'm a bad parent. Uh, <laughs> It's not my opinion, my mom told me, and now I fly around the country spreading the news, you know? <laughs> I agree with her, I don't think we're doing the best, millennials. Like, as a species, we've been having babies for thousands of years, and now it's our turn to sort of be in charge of it. Like, we're the current parents, and for some reason, we've decided that we could do it better. I think we could do it, but let's change, let's change some stuff. We could do it better. I don't know what gave us the confidence to think we could do it better than they've been doing it, but we're messing up big time. Big, to the veteran parents in here, we are messing it up big time. They changed so much. I think, uh, I think millennial parents are bad parents because they want their kids to like them too early. Millennial parents care if their kids like them. I'm born in 1984. If you're my age or older, do you remember your parents caring? <laughs> If you like them, they didn't care. But millennial parents, we care. You see it out, you see. Millennial parents care, they're thirsty for their kids. Likes, like me, please. Please like me. Millennial parents want their kids to like them, so millennial parents don't say no to their kids. No is off limits, no is not a word you hear. You've never been at Target and heard a parent. No! You've never... Some of you felt that in your chest right now. You've never heard it. <laughs> I've like, every one of us has that one millennial parent friend that just says phrases you don't even get. My, I, had a, I had a friend that told me, she was like, I just can't, I just, he just knows, I can't say no to him. I can't say no to him. And I'm like, that's... That's when you're a grandma. You can't say no to him. You have to say no. I grew up with no. <laughs> I feel like half of the crowd right now is like, like half of you really love like the direction this is going. <laughs> and half of the crowd, I could see your faces like I'm holding up a mirror right now and you don't like... No. Millennial parents think they're doing a good job if they get down on their kids' level. Just get down as low as they can to the kids' level. And they say stuff like, um, uh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, can you please? Can you, can you pl please? <gasps> Thank you so much. Excuse me, please. <gasps> Thank you so much. Do you guys remember your parents saying please to you when you were 
You're not homeless. That's all the please and thank you that we got. Please? We've changed the punctuation. That's what we've done, millennial parents. We've changed the punctuation on parenting. Every single one of us in this room, our parents grew up with the same, it was period parenting. Period, hey, come here. Period. And we're like, okay. <laughs> All right, I guess. That's the only option. I guess I gotta go <laughs> over there. Go to bed. Period. And we're like, okay. I guess it's time to go night night. Let me go to bed now. I don't know how you guys remember your childhood. That was me, just like taking orders. Hey, come here. I need to, I need to see you in this area right here, but I don't want to hear you. Just come over here and be quiet. Actually, now that I think about it, go outside and play, and I don't want to hear you outside until I call you back in here. Our entire childhood was, where do we go to shut the hell up? Is it right here? I'll be over here. I'll be quiet over here. Period parenting. Period. We've changed it. We've added a question mark instead of that period, millennial parents, that's what we do. You see them out. You see them out in public. You ever see, ever out with your friends and they're trying to get their kids, excuse me, excuse me, bud, hey, excuse me, bud. Can you come here, please? And the kid's like, no! <laughs> period. <laughs> Ironically, the kids are the only one that says no now. We're like, oh God. You ever stand next to a parent that gets shut down with a no like that and you feel it and you're, you're like, ooh, ooh, that kid's in trouble. They're gonna be in trouble. Cause you think about yourself saying no to your parents like that and never, it doesn't, they don't get in trouble anymore. They don't get in trouble. You stand next to a parent that gets said no to like that, you feel like you're gonna see some punishment. What happens today is that parent will turn to you and start saying sentences you can't even <laughs> comprehend. <laughs> hey, can you come here, please? Please? No! Like, okay, oh, what is, oh, I forgot. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday is a big feelings day for him, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> that's on me, that's my fault. We gotta, we gotta let him play a little bit. Today is his. <laughs> I realize what it is, you guys. It's like we, like most of you in here, you're like in my age group, like we didn't grow up with options. Like we was like, this is it. And millennial parents, we just decide we're gonna give our kids all the options. Like that's what we do. It happens in my house. It happens in my house. My, my wife is white. I, my kids are half white. So they're, I got white kids in my house. So you guys will get this. <laughs> There's a lot, I'm, I'm looking at a lot. It looks like my in-laws. That's what it looks like in here. It's a lot, it's a lot of white faces smiling up at me right now. My kids have options. My son is three years old. Right? And I know my wife didn't grow up like me because this kid wakes up every morning and he comes down to the kitchen and my wife says to a three-year-old, she goes, Kalino, what do you want for breakfast today? And I'm standing behind her like, what the? Like it's, it's Thursday, it's not his birthday, why? Why does he get to pick? You guys ever watched a three-year-old look at all the food that you've worked hard to buy? And look, you could see him looking at the food and thinking to himself, what do I want for breakfast today? You guys, we grew up with two options. You guys remember our options when we were kids? Our parents gave us two options, whatever they put on the table or starve. Those were the two. Look, we didn't kill ourselves, we're thriving today. We made it. Options. Millennial parents are running diners at the house. That's what we're doing now, every morning. What do you want for breakfast? I'm here to take your order, what do you? What do you want for breakfast today? What could I start you off with? Some blueberries? Okay, ooh, that sounds good, blueberries. <laughs> what else would you like today? Waffles? Okay, before I put waffles, what kind of waffles would you like today? <laughs> blueberry waffles, all right, it's a blueberry breakfast. Um, anything else that I could get? Eggs? Okay, before, well, how do you want those eggs prepared? Egg whites scrambled, all right, normally that's a dollar more, but I'm your friend, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
right, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. I think we all, doesn't matter what color you are in this room, we all share the same pastime as humans. Our favorite pastime is people watching. People watching is the best. If you're having a bad day as a person, nothing's gonna turn your day around quicker than going out into society, looking at a complete stranger, then judging everything about their life. More than people watching, lately I've, I've decided that eavesdropping is my favorite. Eavesdropping, eavesdropping is like people watching, but with the sound on. You're like, what are you saying? <laughs> my favorite people to eavesdrop on currently are millennial parents at the park. I love the goofy stuff they say to their kids. I transcribe it, then I fly around the country talking crap about these people. <laughs> and this is my latest, greatest story. I'm at the park with my son, and it's around the time where I'm ready to leave Nashville. So I say to him, I go, hey man, hey. Six minutes, and we're going home. And he goes, okay, and he goes back to playing. He's a good kid. Now, for the parents in the room, I never shout a round number. It's never five, 10, 15. It's always six, nine, 13, some crooked number. And I do that for me. I do that for me because I love shouting this random number, then watching the faces of the other parents at the park say, look up, like, ugh, why six? So specific. Hey man, six minutes, we're out of here. He's like, okay, goes back to playing. Now, this woman approaches me after I told him that. And I talked to her earlier in the park, but she comes up to me. And I talked to her earlier because her daughter was playing with my son. Her daughter, Olivia, two years old, was playing with my son. So Olivia's mom walks up unsolicited and she goes, uh, she goes, excuse me, could I give you a pro tip? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so bold, right? To be clear, I was not wearing a t-shirt that said, I need help today. <laughs> Can I give you a pro tip? The first thought that went through my head was your daughter's two, my son's three. I don't know how you're pro already, but I would, I would love, I would love to hear this pro tip. <laughs> Before I get into the tip, I just want to tell you right now, whatever you're picturing in your head right now for Olivia's mom, accurate. That's exactly... <laughs> She goes, if you want your son to know it's time to go home and you want him to go home when you want him to go home, all you have to do is tell him you're gonna set a timer on your phone and when he hears that timer go off, he'll know it's time to go home. And I was like, ooh, thank you. I'm gonna pass on that tip though. I'm gonna pass on a hard pass on that. I'm actually raising a human, not a Pavlov dog. That's number one. Number two, Olivia's mom, let me tell you why my way is better, okay? Because when I tell this kid six minutes, that really means two minutes, all right? I lie to my kids. <laughs> He's three years old. He has no concept of time. Sometimes six minutes is two minutes. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. But whenever I'm ready to go, I'm like, hey, man, that's six minutes. Let's get out of here. Yo, my name is Matt Hall. Thank you so much. I was realizing this, looking at the lineup just now, you're gonna hear me say a lot tonight, this next comic is a good friend of mine. And normally if you hear hosts say that, they are lying to you. But this is a rare exception where I genuinely know and love everybody on this show. Are you guys ready to bring out your next comic tonight? Make some noise, Nashville. Now make your feel welcome everybody, Jen Fulweiler. Nashville, Tennessee, how we doing? I am here all the way from Texas. Yes, thank you, it's a great nation. I, uh, no, it, it is, it, this is so cool. It is wonderful to be here. This is so much better than where I normally perform my comedy in Austin. It is, I, I gotta be honest, it's, uh, it's not a great place. It's BYOB, the crowd is so rude. It's called the PTA meeting. Uh, <laughs> Just when I get to the hottest part of my set, security takes the mic out of my hand and escorts me out. It's like, can't stand that place. I, uh, anyone here from the suburbs? Other suburbs people? All right. Okay, we'll make it quick. You guys gotta get to bed, all right? We'll, we'll watch time. I, I used to live downtown, and when I lived in a cool part of downtown, I used to brag like, <laughs> I know the door guy at the club. I can always get in. And I still actually say that. I'm just referring to Sam's Club now, so that's... <laughs> Different, different lifestyle. Uh, I, and I just want to say, like, round of applause for everyone at Zany's. What an incredible place. This is, this is amazing. Amazing, amazing. 
Thank you to Nate, to Nate Land, to the whole team. And especially I want to thank them for promoting my appearance on this show with the heavily photoshopped picture that I sent them. <laughs> Not everyone does this. Sometimes I'll be doing comedy somewhere and they'll be like, oh, Jen Fulweiler, we want to show people she's fun. They'll Google Jen Fulweiler having fun. Somewhere on page 26 of an image search, they'll dig up some pictures of me like doing a keg stand, playing beer pong. They put it on the website and then I have to tell the fans like, okay, a lot has changed since last weekend. <laughs> okay, like, please. <laughs> like, really, but, um, but no, I, I, I have to live in the suburbs. I could not afford to live downtown because I have six children. Thank you, I really do. I, I really do have six children. When I said that in Austin one time, a man with face tattoos ran up to me after the show and he said, hey, I really respect your alternative lifestyle. <laughs> like, wow, that's kind of refreshing. <laughs> I, uh, when we invited people to baby showers, they started getting very hostile. They were like, this is not supposed to be a biannual tradition. You know? We ran out of stuff to register for. For my fifth kid, I registered at Sephora. My fifth at the liquor store. Like, let me tell you, when you have your sixth kid, you don't need another baby walker. You need Johnny Walker. <laughs> People bring it up like my personal trainer was trying to motivate me at the gym. She was like, Jen, I want you to go deep into the moment that you brought new life into the world. You've been through this six times, so tell me, go into that moment, and now you tell me, how are you going to conquer these pull-ups? And I was like, scream and beg for drugs. That's... And let me tell you, if this gym has an anesthesiologist, I am about to crush this workout, honestly. Like, it's gonna work out really well. My, uh, so I have a big anniversary coming up. My husband and I have, this year, we will have been married 20 years. Incredible. Yes. Now, those of you guys who have been in relationships for a little while, you guys know you have to be intentional to keep the spice alive. So what I did for my last anniversary, I finally let my husband live his ultimate fantasy. I told him that I would take any constructive criticism he has for me and not get mad. Now, you guys are a young group, but let me tell you, when I say that to a crowd of middle-aged people, there's always a group of 50-year-old guys who are like, wow, that is incredible. <laughs> They're like, is, that, is there a place where I can watch that on the internet? Because like, that's kind of what I'm into you know, at this point. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, it was a wild night. I, uh, I haven't spoken to him since then, but um, he, my husband is very frugal. He's a very frugal man. He is so frugal that he has informed our children that there is a special elf. <laughs> he really did this. Uh, he has informed our children that there's a very special elf in the North Pole who is in charge of quality control. And he likes to put his special sticker on the very best toys. And this elf's name is Clarence. <laughs> you guys, yeah. Sometimes misspelled as Clarence. There are at least a few guys here who were like, is that man available to be my life coach? I, I like the way he thinks. He, uh, no, we, we have a good marriage and he said that we almost didn't get together because when he first met me, he almost didn't ask me out because I am six feet tall and he is five nine. And I said, wow, you totally do not understand how practical I was when I was a single woman. My philosophy was, hey, if I can find a man who is loving, who is supportive, who doesn't ask nosy questions, like where did all these Amazon boxes come from? <laughs> I honestly, like, I don't care if that guy played one of the munchkins in the Wizard of Oz. I do not, I will put that man in a baby Bjorn, carry him out to a date night. <laughs> We will have a good old time. It will be fine. Look, you don't have to be able to ride a roller coaster with your spouse. Like, that's not... It's not like the key to a good marriage or anything. I, um, no, guys, though, I struggle, though. Um, I have adult ADHD, and I am slightly on the Asperger spectrum. Uh, has anyone else been diagnosed on TikTok? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, so I might also have generalized anxiety disorder, but Kaylee hasn't posted part four to the video because she's been grounded, so not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Uh, being a mom with ADHD is, it's really hard, but I do try. 
For my daughter's birthday, I spent all this time making her a very elaborate Monsters in the Slime Pit birthday cake. And, okay, it was supposed to be a Mermaids at the Beach cake, but that's <laughs> actually my best effort. <laughs> and think about this, six kids, do you know how many shoes that is I have to find and put on them every time we leave the house? I mean, the way I do it, it's like seven, but y you know, it, I can't keep up with it. And I don't know if any of you parents have ever gotten to this point where you look at a kid and you're like, okay, you have a bunny slipper on one foot. You have a high heeled plastic princess shoe on your other foot. Uh, what this is gonna have to do, just get in the car. And then you're like, you know, as long as we don't run into any of his friends, I, I think it should be fine. <laughs> Whatever. I, uh, I, I, I can't, one, another thing I didn't see coming is four of my kids are daughters, so they have a lot of dolls. I can't keep track of doll clothes. A, a friend came over to my house and said, Jen, don't you want a better organizational system for your children's dollies so that they can be well-dressed? I was like, look around. Do you notice that half of my human children are not fully clothed? The dolls ain't gonna make the cut. One time my daughters were playing with their Barbies right as this classy friend of my mother's came over to drop something off and they're like, Vroom, here we go. The Barbies are in the pink Barbie Corvette strapped in with the Barbie safety belt, stark naked. <laughs> and my mom's friend is like, what is going on with these Barbies? And I said, look, I bought them teacher Barbie. Now they're a different kind of Barbie, but they make a lot more money than teacher Barbie. So like, it's fine, like, don't worry. <laughs> These Barbies are living their best lives. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. <laughs> One of my teen daughters looked around the other day. She looked around our house and she said, Mom, are we white trash? <laughs> so I explained to her, I said, okay, there is a lot of, of broken down furniture out front that it, and it's getting pretty rusty, but that is because I'm going to upcycle it. I don't want to throw anything away. And yeah, our blinds on the window, they're trash because the dog is, he's bad, but we don't have an alarm system. So he's our free alarm system. And your father enjoys Pabst Blue Ribbon beer because when you have a large family, it's important to make economical, yeah, we're white trash. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. A lady in my neighborhood, she said, when children come spend the night at my house, um, I like to send them home with one of my homemade goods and um, a little card that says, you're always welcome in our home. Aww. Yeah, she said, Jen, what do you send children home with <laughs> when they come to your house? I was like, honey, usually a tetanus shot. <laughs> Uh, but now I'll, I'll end with this. Um, I, I just want to say, uh, are there any other hip hop fans in the room? I love hip hop, genuinely. A couple? Okay, well, we're small but mighty, you know, we're, okay, so a few hip hop fans. But so when I, when I listen to it, sometimes people are like, Jen, have you ever listened to the lyrics to hip hop music talking about getting vengeance on enemies and using drugs to cope? And I'm like, have you ever met suburban women? Let me tell you, I hear Lil Yachty talking about, you step to me, this is the end for you. You front on me, it's over for you and your friends. And I'm like, was he at Michelle's Bunko Group? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I've been Jen Fulweiler. Y'all keep it going for the hilarious Johnny W. All right. So good. All right. So good. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me, Nashville. This is great. It's Tennessee. It means allergy season. Allergies are the worst here. We're number one. You know that, right? They rank the states. We're always number one. Here's how bad it is in Tennessee. I just read this. We have people in Tennessee now buying meth to turn it back into Sudafed. That is when you know it's out of control. It's out of control. <laughs> Great. Uh, trying to get healthy. Uh, sorry, I'm a, my snoring, allergies are bad and my snoring's bad. Anybody, who's married to a snorer in the house? Married to a snorer. Okay, a couple of, couple of guys raised their hands. She's like a freight train. Pray for us. I woke up the other day and my wife was in the next room. I was like, are we that couple now? The separate rooms, people? I thought I had a couple more years. It's so loud, she said. I was like, do I have the apnea? People are dying from that sleep apnea. Do I have that? She goes, I don't know what that is. I said, do I stop breathing? In the middle of the night, she said, no, I wish. 
it's hateful. It's a hateful thing. It's a fun job. I like this job a lot. I do, I've done a lot of weird jobs. I've been doing this 15 years. I, when you first start out, you take a lot of jobs you should have said no to, but you don't know any better. I did, uh, in 2010, I did a homeschool convention. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I got the job because they, my agent told them I was homeschooled my last two years of high school, which is true. But I was like, I don't relate to today's homeschooler. Like one out of five families today, homes. When I did, it was the 90s. It was like shut-ins and burn victims and my family. That was the community of homeschoolers. But this lady called me so excited. Johnny, a thousand homeschoolers are waiting on you. They're so excited. You got, listen, you're one of us. You got to write some homeschool jokes. These people love to be teased. And I was like, lady, I'm on it. And, uh, <laughs> and they do not love it. Uh, no, they do not. I ran out with my homeschool jokes. It was all I could do to get out of there alive. <laughs> we got to learn to laugh at ourselves in this country again. Do you want to hear the joke that offended him? All right, I ran out. I was like, guys, what is the difference between a thousand homeschoolers and my dogs? And they were like, what? I said, my dogs are vaccinated. <laughs> and these homeschoolers will bite you. They will bite you, latch on, had to burn him off like a tick. People are too sensitive. My wife's got a friend. She wants to come with us to lunch after church the other day. I was like, cool, I want to be neighborly. But it's her friend Stacy. Stacy is a vegetarian. I'm like, fine, whatever. But we're going to Cracker Barrel. I was like, what can she eat at Cracker Barrel, sweetie? Okay, they cook their green beans and hog lard. What can she have? The box? What's left? She's like, it'll be okay. Y'all, it wasn't okay. I'm having my old timer's breakfast. Hold my piece of bacon like an American. I can feel Stacy's eyes on me the whole meal. Finally, I was like, what? She said, do you have any idea how they make that? I said, I don't, but you tell them they're nailing it because <laughs> this is like a hug from Jesus. And if you're a vegetarian here tonight, please don't be offended. I want you to feel welcome. Please don't be offended if you're a vegetarian. I mean, I'm not afraid of you charging the stage and attacking me. You're far too weak. So don't even... It's a lot of steps. You could get woozy. I was an awkward kid, painfully shy, and a chubby kid in middle school. Middle school was hard. I had asthma. Who has, who has asthma? Anybody have asthma in here? Hold your inhalers high. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> did, you, did you have the doctor's note in middle school? Wasn't that the best? That's your get-out-of-gym-free card. That's what that is. Hand that over. That's your copy. Okay. I'm going to have a seat. Oh, we're climbing the big rope. I don't think so. <laughs> I will not be getting friction burns on my crotch. I'm going to have a seat wheezed to myself. That was eighth grade. Then ninth grade comes. That's the high school PE teacher, Mr. Bledsoe. What a Nazi. Because what is this, asthma? <laughs> I can cure asthma. I said, you can what? His cure for asthma, y'all, he made me run what's called suicides. Do you guys know what that is? It's like a horrifying series of... Wind sprints, they call it suicide. I don't know who named that, but let me tell you something. If you make a little fat kid run back and forth until he dies, that is homicide. That is not. They will prosecute you. Pretty sure. Gym class games are the worst, right? Who made up these games? Dodgeball, who made that up? Hitler, who made that up? Hey, throw this red ball as hard as you can at that fat kid. Don't hit him in the head, though, or it won't count. Although we'll all laugh. Even the names of some of the games let you know it's not for you. They're like, Red Rover, Red Rover, you separated my shoulder. You're injuring children. <laughs> Hurting people. Middle school was hard. Health class is the worst in middle school because you don't know anything. You're an idiot. You don't know anything. Especially as a boy, you're supposed to know things. You're supposed to be a man. You don't know anything like sex or our bodies. We got no idea. What we're hoping in health class in middle school is that one kid will ask the question that you desperately want to know the answer to. <laughs> So you can be like, what a weirdo, he didn't know. <laughs> All right, noted. <laughs> These are health class heroes. They fell on the grenade for all of us. For me, it was my buddy Chad, seventh grade, man, I'll never forget it. He did it, man. Mr. Trawick, our health class teacher, has got the pointer out. He's pointing at the anatomy chart. He gets down to the ovaries. My buddy Chad sheepishly raises his hand. Mr. Trawick, where are my ovaries? <laughs> The whole class froze. Mr. Trawick said, son, you don't have ovaries. <laughs> and a lot of us laughed, you know. But some of us were like, what? 
what happened to Chad's ovaries? And how does Mr. Trawick know about it? <laughs> Terrifying. Mm -hmm. Trying to eat better, it's hard on the road, man. People want to take you out, take good care of you, man, you know. I was at a, doing a club in Tampa last month, and the guy goes, hey, you like lobster? I go, lobster, let's go, I'm a big shot. I didn't know we were going to his house. That's a different experience. His wife is five feet from me in the kitchen. I heard the sound of a live lobster going down into the pot. <laughs> This whistling, screaming sound came out. I was like, I'm out of here. Not joining this cult. She comes out all defensive. Johnny, settle down. First of all, that's not a scream. That's a physiological reaction. That's just air escaping. Air is escaping. I said, that's what a scream is. <laughs> Who are we kidding? No, they love it. It's like a jacuzzi. They love it. That's like leaving the show tonight and seeing somebody get stabbed and being like, he's just letting off excess blood. He's fine. He had a lot. And we laugh at the vegetarians, but be honest with yourselves. We're all conflicted. We eat the meat. We're conflicted, though. Okay? I'll prove it to you. We change the name of the meat, the cuter the animal gets. What's that about? That's a coping skill. Chicken meat's just chicken. Fish meat's just fish. Why? They're ugly. They're beady-eyed. Kick them in the face. We don't care. <laughs> we don't care. We get to cows. If something happens. We're like, cows are cute. Look at them. Beef. This one's beef now. It's what's for dinner. Beef. This isn't deer. Lord, no. Venison. Enjoy that venison. I mean... <laughs> This isn't raccoon, this is a McRib. We changed the names. Some of you are like, is that true? We don't know what's in a McRib, be honest with yourselves. All we know is it goes away, then it comes back every few months. Where's it going? I can't do McRibs anymore, this is true. Vanderbilt University, they had a chemistry major a few years ago. She did a study on all the chemicals in some of the fast food, right? It made national news because she found an ingredient in McRibs also used to make exercise mats. That's true. That's so gross. And if you're in here tonight and you eat McRibs, you're probably like, what is an exercise mat? <laughs> y'all are great. I'm Johnny W. Thanks for having me. See y'all next. Johnny W, ladies and gentlemen. That's our show. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Have a great night, everybody. Thank y'all so much.